All right, so let's get started. Thank you everyone for joining us today for our interactive virtual webinar. We're going to be covering Microsoft Project Management, talking about enabling agility, choice, and governance. My name is Ray Cecily. I am the Sales Solution and Marketing Specialist with Prosperi, and I also have my colleague here, Andre. Andre? Hi, hi everyone. I'm glad to be here. It's good to share my knowledge with you. I'm a tech lead at Prosperi. I work at Prosperi for five years, so it has been five good years implementing project management solution for, for companies all around the, the world. And we're so glad to have you as our project management expert. So we know that long term survival in an evolving environment requires organizations that can change strategy and modify their responses quickly and effectively. So our goal is to help you find your internal agility to support these rapid strategy changes with different solutions and methodologies that go beyond traditional project management models. So we're going to learn different ways of navigating challenges of transformation in the corporate environment, agility in business and technologies aimed at empowering different frontline users because that's a critical factor of success and also how to simplify project and portfolio management because we all want that and to instill governance regardless of whatever method you use. So let's move on to our agenda. So real quickly, we're going to give you a brief introduction about Prosperi, just two quick slides so that you know who you're talking to and why we are the right people to be talking about this. Then we're going to start talking about project management because that's all why we're here today, correct? Um, so we're going to talk about project management doesn't have to be complicated. It's been complicated. It can be complicated, but it doesn't have to be. We're also going to discuss, as I just mentioned, that you can choose how you want to, the method that you want to use, whether it's agile, waterfall, or hybrid. We also want to address our PMOs. So we want to show you how you can have a comprehensive view of the company's portfolio. We also want to show you how you can take advantage of the Microsoft Power Platform and really enhance your project management practices. And then lastly, we also want to address our admins so that they know how to track and control with transparency and governance because that's very important for the most efficient project management practices. So just real quick, Prosperi intro. I just want you to know who you're talking to or who you're watching from. So we've been around for 29 years, but we have been 19 years as a gold certified partner with Microsoft in project and portfolio management. Um, you can see in the bottom left corner all of our gold competencies that we are certified in. We've also very proudly been named a Microsoft Worldwide Finalist in Project and Portfolio Management four years, including last year. And we've also been named Latin, the LATAM Microsoft Partner of the Year in PPM for the last five years in a row and six years total. Um, so we are experts in project management because it's our passion. So we also have expertise in several technologies with solutions aimed at digital transformation and business agility involving innovation management and investment management with our custom built solution called Teams Ideas. We also involve process automation, business intelligence collaboration and tailor made solutions with our Power Squad service focused on the Microsoft Power Platform. And of course, the reason why we're all here today is my project and portfolio management with our Microsoft solutions. So that's it about us. Now let's talk project management. So Microsoft's modern work management vision is really simple, but also complex if you think about it, because some companies just can't get it right. But really what they want is teams to work the way they want and executives to get the results that they need. So it's not that hard of a concept, but some companies are really struggling on how to um, satisfy both of those. So we're going to really talk today on how to adapt that and really try to adjust and have a more agile um, way of managing your projects. They really want to empower companies to achieve their better results with their um, and aligning their investments um, with projects and resources. And it's just about agility, flexibility, collaboration, and then also, you know, just being able to use consistent tools through the Microsoft Cloud platform. So we're going to talk 
about how project management doesn't have to be complicated because you know manual processes impact business agility but organizations haven't always wanted to adopt adopt robust sometimes complex project management tools so we're going to take a look at project for the web it's an easy to use tool that can empower anyone to effectively manage projects even if they don't have the project manager title let us show you a brief snippet of truly how to get how easy it is to get started with this tool. Andre, you want to take us through this? Uh, yes, thank you, Ray. So this is a pre-recorded video for this webinar, and in this video, I show how easy how easy and how simple it is to create a project in Project for the Web. So we just clicked Create New Project. Then I'm starting filling out tasks. So we have the preparation, select new office. This is going to be a, a short and simple project just show, to showcase how easy it is. So after you fill out the tasks, you can make them subtasks. So you just select them, right click and make them subtasks. You can start continuing ta uh, adding tasks and they uh, they will be added in the level. You you stop it, right? So it's re really easy. You'll see in a sequence that where I will add more columns. Some fields there are already there. You can already use them. And, and then in the next video, I will even show how to create new custom fields. OK, so right now I'm just enabling some other fields that are already there for you to use project for the web comes with them and then you'll be able to use them if i click the project name i can rename it this one is going to be called office move plan i can set who is going to be the project manager for that in this case it's irving's irving sayers right uh, i set the start date and i can set the default calendar for this project okay so this is really easy as you saw in, in just one minute we started filling out the project. Now we are going to assign tasks to, to people in our organization, and th this will automatically uh, assemble the team for the project. So right now we'll have Alex, who's going to be responsible for those two tasks. For that one, it's going to be Alan. And when, the, when that pop-up shows up, it's saying, you're going to add Alan to the project team, okay? And it's good to go. Okay, so now that task it's uh, for Alan and for Alex. This one is for Deborah, and this one is for Alex. So right now we're going to set the durations. I set it to five days, two days, five days, five days, and we can set the as hours as well. For example, this one's going to be 12 hours, and we can set the dependency as well. So this one depends on task two. This one depends on task two as well. This one on two. So you can have the, the dependencies here, and it's going to, to be able to uh, when one task is late, it's going to impact the others, right? Because they are dependent on each other. So this is the grid view. We can mark one uh, task as completed. We can set the percent complete here. We can change the start, the, the, the finish. This is the board view and it's all uh, associated. So whenever you change one thing in the board view, it's going to reflect back in the grid and it's going to reflect in the timeline as you will see in the, in the, in the next tab. And right now we can create the buckets. We'll have the preparation and execution. We can move one task to to from one bucket to the other. We have different views. For example, if you want to see uh, who's assigned to, so there we go. You can see it by progress. So really, really easy, really simple. You can drag and drop if one task is started. You you just drag from not started to in progress. And then lastly, we have the timeline, which uh, I, I know all of you are already really familiar with it, right? So you can even uh, use drag and drop again in, in, the, in the in the bars. You can extend it. You can you can stretch. You can change. You can uh, and if you click the task, you will open that right uh, right info info uh, form, and you can change the tasks here as well. So you have the checklists. If you if for, for any task, you can set you can create a checklist for that, and you have notes as well on the top. I'm going to show here in a sequence. You can have attachments as well. So if you want to attach any file to your tasks, you can do that and you have the notes as well. So it was a bit rushed, uh, a bit rushed, but in three minutes uh, I was able to show how how quick you can create your project in Project for the Web. I mean, I know you're saying that was rushed, but as you just said, it shows how easy it is to actually create a project in Project for the Web. I mean, Three minutes you just did so much so once you learn and the tool's so easy to use um, it's really super fast and efficient so thanks andre 
Yeah. All right. So one question we're often asked is, is project for the web customizable, which the answer is yes. It is customizable in many, many ways. There's so many options we wouldn't have time to cover it all in our webinar. We'd all be asleep by now, um, but we'll highlight a few ways that it can be. Um, for one example, we did have a customer who wanted to use the board from Project for the Web, but also wanted to have labels similar to Planner. Um, so we showed them about custom fields and how easy it is to be able to create. You're right, Ray. So if we if we create a custom field here in Project for the Web, we can use this field as a label, just the, the same way we use in Planner. So you see how easy it is, and you see that we will we'll be able even to f use this field as a filter. This is what our customer needed. So right now I'm creating a new field. Uh, it can have a, a series of different types. In this case, I chose choice, and it's the field is called category, and then I just inputted here three sample categories, category A, category B, and category C. So after that, we are going to, to set the, the category for each task. You can use this field we have just created. And then if you want to go to the board view or the timeline or the grid, you'll be able to filter out the tasks you, you want based on this field. And you can create other fields as well. So this can this can go, this, this is a, a huge game changer and it really helps. So for example, category B, and you will be able to filter out and only see the tasks that uh, are eligible to this filter. So. This is a good way and this. Um, who is missing that those labels from Planner and really want to use the board from Project for the Web? You can still use it if you have if you set your custom fields. I mean, custom fields are really easy to use, but it's also awesome that you can filter based off of those custom fields. So um, obviously very easy to use. Thanks. So let's move on. So oftentimes we sense hesitation from customers because they currently use projects online and they have projects already there, but they want to transition to project for the web without losing their information. So a customer of ours was in the same situation and we showed them how it was possible to download the MPP file from project online and then upload it into project for the web so that they didn't lose any of their projects or any of their project data. Andre, take us through how this works. Yeah. Not even it is possible, but it is really easy. As you can see, if we click the arrow, we can choose an MPP file, which can, we can download from Project Online. And it, or if you work with your with your schedule uh, offline using our Project Professional, and then you can import it this file from your computer to Project for the Web, and it creates your your project automatically. So it comes with the durations, with the with the dependencies, and with everything. And You'll be able to go. So if you if you use Project Online and you have few tasks there, few projects there, sorry, you can manually move them as we are showing. But of course, some of you might have a, a, a big number of projects there, and this is why we have Power Automate to create a migration tool to bring the the projects from Project Online and upload them into Project for the Web. This is also uh, able to do with Power Automate if if you want to to move projects in bulk, right, right? Yeah, I mean, moral of the story is you don't have to start from scratch if you do transition a project for the web. There's always a way, just depending on how many projects you have um, and how large that is, that there's always a way to migrate over to project for the web whenever you're ready for that next step. So definitely easy to use. So another feature that is sought after is to have project templates. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel as we just talked about from moving from project online to project for the web. So in Projects for the Web, you can create one project which will be used as a template and then copy it every time you need to start a new project. So you don't have to start from scratch and you can go ahead and copy your project templates. So show us how easy this is. Yes, Ray, you said it all. If you want to have a template, you just can have that project as a template and every time you want to create a new project based on that, you copy it and then you just tweak whatever you want. If you, want, if you need a new task or if you want uh, to change some durations based on the, your new project, but you start from a copied project and it can, it can act as a template. So it's really simple and really effective. And what's like a common scenario where you see this? Well, based on usually construction uh, companies, they have already in place their their uh, their WBS. They have everything like the blocks of the buildings. So. After that, you just copy one project, you use it as a template, and you change just a few, uh, a few, few tweaks, and then you have your project. Okay, awesome. 
Love to not have to start over from scratch. Thanks, Andre. Welcome. So now that Microsoft Teams has become a staple part of everyday business operations due to the influx of remote workers, many companies are prioritizing using tools that are centralized and easy to use within Microsoft Teams. So the great news is Project for the Web is usable within Microsoft Teams. So we did have a customer of ours just recently who was a heavy user of Teams. They were looking for a PM tool um, and they were really trying to emphasize having a PM tool that was integrated within Microsoft Teams so that their team could work within a centralized location um, and, and work within the same tool. So that makes it really easy to use. Um, let's see how this looks like. Yeah, yes. So what, whatever you saw in the past videos, you have it here as well inside Teams. So we were using the browser, but now you're using Microsoft Teams. So inside the team, you can have in basically any channel, you can create the tabs and in, the, in this tab, you can set a project to it. So right now you can see the project plan. We have the grid, the board, the timeline. So whatever we can do in the browser, we can do in Teams as well. And there's a good perk of using Teams because if you already have your team assembled, like for example, you have a team of your uh, HR department and you want to create a, a project for HR, you just go there, you just insert a tab and the team will be already put together. You won't, you wouldn't need to, to create a project from scratch and then add everyone to the team because you're, you're already working inside the team. It's different from Project Online because in Project Online, every time you create a new project, you, you need to come up with the, with the team. Yeah, and this definitely makes it easier and more simplified. So definitely a huge perk of using it within Microsoft Teams. Thank you, Andre. So just like how organizations like to have a hybrid environment between Microsoft Teams and their project management tool, we've also seen an increasing trend of using agile waterfall or hybrid project management methodologies. And the beauty is the choice is yours. So Andre, talk us through how Project for the Web supports all of these. Yes, you saw from our initial video that we have the grid, the board, and the timeline. And whatever we do in one of these views, it reflects back to the other. So if you want to start a project from scratch and start directly from the board, and if you use this in conjunction with custom fields, you can create your own agile projects here in Project for the Web. So for example, right now in this uh, example, we have the product backlog, the sprint backlog in progress and done as buckets. And then we have the categorization of each sprint in, in, in custom fields. So then you will be able to filter, to manage your agile projects this way. You can have your uh, different uh, agile metrics as custom fields as well. So this is really one way to go. All right, let's see waterfall. A waterfall, I don't, I don't know if we need to talk much about it because as you can see, Project for the Web, of course, supports waterfall. So you have the dependencies, you have the Gantt chart, and if one task is, uh, the duration is, is um increased it's going to reflect back the other so the usual waterfall experience yeah and yeah. what about the best of both worlds with a hybrid method yeah this is something we can do as well so you can have a, a as you're showing here in this example you can have one custom column column uh, called methodology and then you you just pick how you're going to uh, manage those tasks and then the other one called sprint where you can set the, the, the sprint for each task. So for example, I filter out the waterfall ones and this part of the project we're going to manage in a waterfall methodology. And then if I want you to change it back to the board and filter out by sprint one, we, we can manage this part of the project using um, an agile approach by, by having the cards and everything. I mean, so, if it's great to be able to use all the different options and that all of them are supported. Yeah. So, so regardless of what methodology is used to manage the projects by the project manager, PMOs always want to have a comprehensive view of the company's project portfolio performance. So PMOs, we are now talking to you. So the Project Accelerator offers so much, including out of the box Power BI reports that give you much more information about your projects, programs, risks, and more. Andre, do you wanna add more about the Accelerator? Sure, yes. What we've, what we've seen up to this point is just based on tasks and projects, but the Accelerator is a solution developed by Microsoft and it enhances this experience. It brings to the, to the table uh, programs, risks, issues, lessons learned, change requests. So all of this will 
in increase the, the project management experience and the PMOs will have a, a control over all of it. I mean, For that example, definitely helps. Yeah, let's, let's move on to and it, it comes with a, a series of reports. So in this video, we're going to showcase uh, some of I mean, all of the reports, but just really quick so you know, so you have a glimpse on what it's included there. This is really out of the box. Those reports are, are offered uh, by Microsoft and and it's already connected to the to the project for the web and to the accelerator, which is everything the same thing right after after we install, right? So here you have the risks dashboard, the issues dashboard, changes dashboard. I'm we're going to show in the sequence each of these entities. Like here you have the status report, the resources dashboard, resource assignments, resource allocation. We're just going really fast because it's a lot to cover, but yep, there's a task overview project timeline, my work and my timeline. Yeah, so this was the this uh, this was the report offered by Microsoft. A lot of information there, a lot of way to analyze your data and make better decisions. So basically everything. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So when you use the accelerator, you will have many more project fields to use, allowing you to do more and providing a more holistic perspective of your projects. So it really extends the project entity into the dataverse, allowing you to do more. Um, show us more about this, Andre. Sure, Project for the Web uses the dataverse to store data and the accelerator in enhances those entities. So as you can see, those are project fields. You can have a, a custom workflow for the project and every field you see here in the background, those are project fields. So you have the program there, you have the business case, you have the financials. Some of those uh, values, they are reflected back from the schedule. You have the resources, the tasks, which is the project for the web part. Let's take a, just a second for it to open, but it's going to show the schedule here. You have the Okay, so you have the risks, which is another entity which is associated with the project issues, changes like the change of requests, the statuses report that you can uh, create for this project. So it's really a lot. The project accelerator comes with all of it out of the box, but we can always uh, customize it, create new fields, create new entities. So based on your need, based on your uh, organization needs, we can customize the, the, the accelerator and make it even better. Love to hear that, especially to be able to customize even the accelerator. So that's really important just because there's no one size fits all for every organization. So the accelerator does provide you a big picture view by grouping your projects into programs to track their progress. And this ultimately allows you, the PMO, to have more control and have a more holistic perspective with a big picture view. So let's see how this works. Yes, you can group projects into programs. You saw in the, in the past video where we had a, a field called program there, and this is the program uh, screen. So you can have your program fields. You have the financials which are reflected back from the projects and they are grouped up. You have the status of the program. You have the projects which are part of this program, the notes from the program. So all of this comes with the accelerator as well, and this is a good way to, to work. Awesome, love that. All right, so we have talked about project for the web. We've talked about the accelerator. Now we're going to move on and talk about how to take advantage of the Microsoft Power Platform, which is an excellent way to really enhance your project management practices. So if, it's, if we haven't mentioned it, enough great things already, the Power Platform is truly a powerful tool to take your practices to the next level. You will have endless possibilities of what you can do with the different solutions on the Power Platform, um, including integrating with other systems using Power Automate, you can create custom reports with Power BI to really be able to see the data that you want to see and be able to create, you know, make data driven decisions. Um, create a custom project workflow with Power Automate. You can create a Power Virtual Agent, which is a chat bot to be able to provide information about your projects, which is quick, easy and simple. And also create Power Apps connected to, data, to the Dataverse to read or write data. So like I said, the, they're literally, I would think, probably thousands of ways that um, you really are endless options on how you can really take advantage of the Power Platform, but um, we're going to highlight just a few options um, here so that you can see different real life examples. So Andre, take us through this. 
Yeah, it's really easy to use the Power Platform to enhance the, the project for the web and, and the accelerator because it's all in the dataverse, so it's really simple to, to get data, to write data, so it's and it's it's really secure at the same time. Uh, let me disclose first that this is this is shown in Portuguese because we have clients from all over the world. So uh, this is an app we created for a company, and this company build power lines. And most of the time, the project managers they need to go in field and update the progress of those those uh, those projects. And most of the time, they don't have an internet connection in the field, right? And so we build this power app, and inside the app, they can. Uh, select the projects they're going to work this week and throughout the week they can update the progress even if they are offline without connection and then once they go back to a hotel once they get their wi-fi connection back they just click synchronize and then all they have done in the field it gets synchronized and sent it back to to the to the server and then uh, everyone gets on the same page it's it's a really really cool app and it, i'm really proud we do this we did this I mean, a lot of companies or people think in general that if you don't have internet access or data capabilities that you're just disconnected from being able to gather and take in this information. But I mean, this is an excellent example of how you can really keep everything up to date, accurate and really gather that information in real time and then upload it. So excellent example. Take us through the next one. So this next one is a Power Apps connected to the issues from the dataverse which we have presented. So it's inside Teams and it's already inside one project. So here we are seeing the issues from that project. So if we edit or if we create an issue or if we remove, it already gets synchronized and it's connected to the dataverse. So if people want to use an app to create issues, to create a change request, to create a risk, this is really simple and really easy to do. And you can uh, plug these Power Apps into any anywhere you want. In this case, it's here in Teams, but you can use uh, in your phone as well if you prefer. It's up to you. So you yep. can work anywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Power BI integration. Yeah. So because it's in the dataverse, it's really simple to get the data from the dataverse and and create the the reports you want. And if you want to to create new new charts, new new slides, new filters. Power BI is the way to go for for reporting. I mean, uh, it it doesn't get better than that. Yeah, and like I said before, it's really important to be able to see the data that you want to see, not just you know out of the box stuff, but everything that you want to see to be able to really make data driven decisions. So Power BI is super um, powerful to be able to provide the information that's the most important to you. And the next one. Next one is a uh, uh, it showcases a little bit about Power Automate and in conjunction with uh, with the accelerator. And this is this is a flow from Power Automate that already comes with the, the accelerator. And this showcases the power of Power Automate. So uh, another entity that comes with the accelerator is project requests. So you can start one one idea as project request, and then once it gets approved, just like the video is showing, it it gets uh, promoted into a project. So there you go. So we just need to change one uh, project request from new to approved, and then it Power Automate has a trigger that listens to it, and then it creates a new project in a in a project entity in in the dataverse. So, and the fields are are copied, right? So whatever you inserted in the project request, it gets copied to the project, and you don't need to redo it. You will already have uh, the business case, and if it's a if it's a good idea or not. Or not so it's Power Automate is really, really, really powerful. So, uh, <laughs> really it's powerful. Redundant. It's redundant, <laughs> right? <laughs> but you, well, yeah. I mean, no one wants to start over from scratch. So, like you said, it's a great way to bring the information over and, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and the possibilities are endless. Just like we mentioned when we, are, we were talking about the copy in Project mm -hmm. for the Web, we can get data from one system in, in in this example would be project online and write in another one so you can have this an integration or you can use it as a migration tool so power automate does it all love to hear that i mean the power platform between all the tools on there definitely can you can do it all all right so we've talked to our project managers we've talked to our pmos 
Now we're going to talk to our admins. So we're going to show you how you can track and control the Power Platform and your project data. So keep in mind that just like there are endless possibilities of what can be done with the Power Platform, there's also a lot of different options that can what can be done with this. So we're just going to show you how you can track with transparency and, and have some governance over your projects. Yeah, so this is for the, out, the admins out there. We are going to show just the four initial uh, analytics to the left there. You can see the, the menu. So this is the first is going to be the capacity summary overall. So it's not based on any environment. You can see how much it, of the database is being used. You can see which environment is consuming the most. So yeah, this would be the first one. The second one is, is about one environment. So Rick, if you please can advance it. Yep. This one, yep. <laughs> so this is, is still a, a capacity summary, but now it's related to one environment. So you have the database usage uh, in terms of, of data, and then you have the file usage in terms of uh, attachments and files. So you can see what entities are consuming the most in terms of uh, capacity. Okay. Next one, we're going to talk a, a little bit about the common dataverse, common data service, which is the old name for the Dataverse. So if you see CDS or Dataverse, it basically is, it's the same thing. And right here we can see the, the number of API calls. If you have some peak during the day, where a lot of people are using uh, the number of executions, the, the most active users, and you have a lot of tabs out there. If you can see you, can, you have act, active users, mode of access, you have a lot. We're not going to showcase all of it, but just so you can know that there's a lot to, to track and control here. The next one is about Power Automate. So you can see in terms of daily runs, which run, which flows runs most uh, more more times during the day, and and you you have the weekly runs, the monthly runs. It's just a different slices, different ways to see the data. But you ha also have uh, the the how many errors you got, so the usage, uh, the, the how many flows were created in that week. So you have a lot to to, to see here as well. And lastly, about Power Apps, uh, you can see here based on the location of the users, based on the the, the, the version they use, if they use uh, the web or if they use the, the tablet, if they use the, their phone, the, the version, the player version they are using, so across country. So there's a lot, there's a lot. If, if we talk, we can, we can, we can start a new <laughs> webinar just about governance and tracking and control separated by Power Platform, uh, Project for the Web, talking about environments. There's so much to talk about. Okay, well, as much as I know you'd love to keep going on, <laughs> we'll just have to save that for our questions later, but thank you for explaining that and all the different possibilities. My so pleasure. I know that we've covered a lot through this webinar and I hope you've learned some new information, including the fact that project management can really be simplified and a great way is by using Microsoft Project for the Web. We also discussed how you can manage projects the way you want, whether it be agile, waterfall or hybrid. We also talked about the Project for the Web Accelerator and how it's a great tool to extend Project for the Web capabilities and it's very useful for PMOs to have a bigger picture view. The Power Platform for me is one of the most powerful tools to take your project management practices to the next level, allowing you to gain more insight, more control, provide newer ways to interact with Project for the Web. And lastly, we discussed how admins can have transparency and governance with tools found in Project for the Web Admin Center, such as capacity planning, Power Automate Analytics, Power Apps Analytics, and much more. So hopefully it wasn't too fast. We had a lot of great information to cover, but if you want to learn more about project in general, you can visit Microsoft's website. You can also try project for free. Um, there's also a help and learning uh, URL that you can access as well right there. So um, again, we are Prosperi. Andre and I would like to thank you for taking the time out of your day today to join us. Our contact information is provided, so please feel free to reach out to us directly. Um, we are here. We are your project experts. We can help with any questions, any customizations, any um, migrations, anything that you need. Um, we're here for you. So thank you so much. Andre, thank you for sharing your passion expertise as well. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Thanks everyone.